Next up is a 72 cutlass, old cutlass convertible. So this is where we're at. We're gonna start the project. I previously got all the seats stripped down because the frames were rusty. This is, by the way, is an all original car. It's never been touched. Stripped down the frames. Um, the customer went and got them all powder coated. They look just very nice. Very, very nice. So this is what came off. This is the old foam for front seat backrest. This is a, looks like probably the front seat bottom cushion. And I started taking apart some of these covers here for patterns. Kept most of them intact so that way I know how they go back together. This is going to be the first one that I work on right here. And I kept one completely intact. Because what I'm going to be doing is duplicating the pattern. But this time we're going to go all vinyl. I guess he wasn't too fond about this original uh, fabric that they used here in 1972. So we're going to give him what he wants. Picked up um, five yards of the vinyl that he chose which looks like Allegro Shadow Green Marine Vinyl so let's open it up see what it looks like it's a little bit greener slightly different color than what was original on the car but this is the closest thing which he also approved it's like a marbleized green vinyl it's got more than one color in it that's why it looks like it's marble but that's what the original one had so here we go I usually start out with the inserts first to make the new inserts to begin to make the new seat covers so what I did is I took my two seat insert patterns here and I could see that if I lay them side by side I can actually get the two front seats done here just by doing this one section so I'm going to start over here on this end And I'll start drawing them out. So I have this picture that I took before I took the seats apart to show that even from the factory that they didn't line up the, the pleats correctly. What I'm measuring out here is a two inch pleat. If I was going back to fabric again, because fabric is very light and it will create a, a deeper pleat, I might go as much as maybe two and a quarter inch. But since we're going vinyl this time, I think we're gonna stay at that two inch. This is what we're gonna aim for here. Technique number 4,855. Start off with a nice sharp piece of chalk. I, I like to use the white because it doesn't stain like the yellow does. It's a lot easier to clean up and to uh, remove it later. So we're gonna go ahead and start making our pattern. So and we said that we were gonna start off with two inch pleats and really that is what I'm measuring right here right here so that's a two inches so usually at the end of an insert it's usually going to be either the same two inch width from this pleat to the end where it's sewn that's where you want to aim for 
but sometimes they're a little bit further out especially when we need this extra half inch here uh, to be able to sew so what I do instead of measuring the two inches there it might even go as far as three inches so what we will do is we will go out here three inches so we got to count out how many we have so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine so what we'll do is we'll start off here where we have our marks before and then every two inches I just put my little mark right there So now I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, how do you like that? So I'm gonna get rid of this last one right there. So let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this one here looks really narrow. And that's really the way it was from the factory because this is the inside of the seat here where the two backrests meet. That's probably the reason for that. So I'm counting out two here. So I'm probably going to go two and a half to the outside. So that'll be it right there. Okay. So what happens when you sew up the pleats, the material will shrink this way. But it won't shrink this way when you're sewing the pleats this direction. This one here doesn't shrink, but this one here does. So if I leave like a, an inch or so overlap there, I'm safe. So I'll do the same thing right here. And then we'll put this one here. So I know an inch past that. Take this one here and repeat. there and there should be enough left over here for this last piece okay so measuring from the edge on this first chalk mark looks like it's really three and three eighths from that edge so I'm gonna come up here the other side measure the same three and three eighths and that's where we're gonna start after that is two inch pleats So there's one, ten, eight, seven, well, six, right? Four, two, one. Okay, then on the last one, we said that we were going to go the two and a half. Now I'll take my long edge. So this is tip number uh, 2,842. Okay, uh, what I like to do is I like to put a, actually get a little bit of glue on the front edge of my straight edge here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over this way. And what it does is it creates a, a grip. So that way the it doesn't slide around on the vinyl. So I'll flip it over and, and, and it's going to have a more hard time here sliding. So we will line up the chalk marks. And because uh, there's a thickness in the chalk, this is a technique number, uh, oh, this is uh, 1,945. Okay, so you don't put the straight edge directly over the top of the chalk line mark because then you're going to have different measurements so what you do is you account for the thickness of the chalk so you set it to the side of the chalk mark and then there we go then you just continue
Okay, so now I'm going to make the separating marks. So the first one here is ten and a half. So we'll go ten and a half right here, right here. Next one is seventeen. So we'll go seventeen right here and right here. Join that together. Flip over the straight edge. Oh, sounds like I got a visitor. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, that was a customer. He uh, just ordered a convertible top for his little Mazda Miata. So to continue here, we got ten and a quarter here. I want to make sure it's square. Okay, so that's our four panels. So I need to apologize for one thing. What I really should have done was check this material first to make sure it was square before I drew my lines. But sometimes I do this stuff in my sleep with my eyes closed. And so I just go for it, but you can see I'm like an eighth of an inch off right here. So all I really got to do is just mark that and just trim it. But you know what? An eighth of an inch isn't that big of a deal. But just to be fair, I'll go ahead and mark it on both ends. That way I know I'm square. It's like almost nothing right there. That was technique number 735. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and trim off that. I can't even get the scissors to grab it. Not a lot of vinyl there. So anyway, just to keep things going here. That's what I had to trim off to make it square. So, no hate comments, okay? All the, from all the professionals out there. Okay, so I have my lines marked. So we'll go ahead and just, you'll see that maybe I don't cut perfectly straight and slow on a line because you got to keep things moving. This is the real world. This is not just for a YouTube video. So for technique, technique number, uh, this is a 435. Okay, what I usually do, because I know that I'm going to make this here for one seat back, and this is going to be the uh, second seat back. So what I do is I just take the chalk, and I, and I mark it like this. That way I know that these two sides go together, and I know that these two sides here go, go together. And I'll just number them. I'll say number one. And number two that way they'll always be together in the future So there's a few different ways of um, gluing the material onto this foam. I'm using a half inch back foam, or sometimes the suppliers of people, they call it scrim. I don't use any products by that sound like three men glue. I don't do that. So anyway, 
what I do is just go to Harbor Freight, pick up one of these $27 spray guns, fill it up with a real nice um, contact adhesive. This is what I use right here. That's the good stuff. So, <clears throat> nice contact adhesive. So, one of the ways to spray the glue so okay I'm gonna give you technique number uh, 455 okay so the technique to spraying material on the foam is you don't want to spray directly down because then you're gonna get this and what this does is it soaks up into the foam and you'll get a big huge distortion so the trick to spraying foam is not straight down but to have it fan across and to fan sideways or like that and keep the gun moving and always remember where there's no glue it's not going to stick so you want to get a real nice coverage technique number 1002 so one of the ways to glue the back is to fold it in half spray it glue. Fold it over, do the other half. Now when you join the two together, what you do is you take your flat hand, you don't use your fingers or else it'll leave dents. So you just take your flat hand There you go. So now the, the second technique, now this is technique number 1002.2. .2. Okay, so what, the other thing that you could do is just flip it over on its side like this. Spray your glue. So now for gluing technique number 1002.3. Okay, so the other way to do it is to spray the glue on the material side first. And then glue your foam side second. which is similar to technique number 1002.2. So technique number Two. Now this is one of the most important ones when it comes to sewing. Is um, a lot of guys have a hard time sewing a straight line. And it's the control. It's really like driving a car down the road. You want to follow the line. Uh, that's the first step. Really if you wanted to uh, 
uh, perfect a technique of sewing a straight line, take some Tai Chi lessons. If you ever seen, look up a video for Tai Chi, the arm movements are the same. So anyway, if you get pretty good at Tai Chi, you probably get pretty good at this. So basically, finishing up this front seat insert pleats. It does the Tai Chi movements for the arms. And your breath control is another one. Believe it or not, I think I hold my breath when I sew. Pretty sure of it. Okay, so those are all the pleats for these four panels. Now let's move on to the next step. So this is why I uh, put this mark on here and I number them. This is number one, this is number one, so that way I know that these two here still go together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be tracing out the original patterns here. So I can see here that these pleats from the shrinkage and I mark, originally marked off two inches. Now they're uh, like sixteenth of an inch shrinkage on each one. So I guess when you got nine pleats, the sixteenth inch will add up. So what I did when I took this off of the seat is I marked the center, which happens to be that center pleat right there. One other way to find out the center is to fold it in half, just like that. And there's my center. And if you want, really want to be a little bit more accurate, um, I, I bought a box, a big box of these China, China markers. So they, the, the white marking comes off pretty cleanly. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to match up that center. Make sure everything looks nice and horizontal. And I'll take my, what I want to do is I want to trace to the outside of that little lip right there. Do that all the way around. I can see that it goes right to the edge. There, it's not perfectly square. It's got a little curve to it. And while I'm at it, I, I put these corner markers right here. Okay, this just goes across the bottom. It does our pattern for that piece. We'll do the same for the, uh, for the next one. So the, the curved bottom on this particular seat here is, is that's also how I know how the bottom and there's a hole here for the headrest at the top. I can see that there's a lot of warpage right here and shrinkage and it doesn't look, the shape is off a lot. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and compensate for that make it straight again if 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 the this lip isn't sticking out like that usually what i do is i just visualize that it is to mark that put my little corner mark that's the center okay i'm going to scoot this over just a little bit technique number uh 674 okay 
So sometimes when you get a warped edge, that's, that's, it's not a nice straight edge. What I do is I mark it to the high point of that curve. I mark the opposite end right here. Then I'll take my straight edge and I'll join the two. Just like that. That makes up for the warped edge. You can see the, the amount right here where it was off. Probably because of the failure of the foam or shrinkage or something happened there. Same thing with the top edge. You can mark one side there and you can see it's warped pretty bad. So I'll put it right there. And just join the two lines and you got a nice straight edge. So now these are ready to get sewn up. Okay, now we're going to sew that our marking on the for the pattern here. So this is technique number 753 for how to how to uh, sew a corner. So when you know that you hit your corner, set your needle down into that corner, then rotate the material, then you can start again. Now is when it starts looking like you got something. So tip number 834. When you go to cut these out, cut as close to that thread as you can. All the way around. I hope you caught that on the video. Let's tell you that. So cut right next to that thread. So I have these little marks here. This is a reference marks for later when I go to put something together. Fold it in half, do the little nip right there. Fold it in half, you know that center, same with this one, tip number 843, always pick up your your trimmings and put them in the trash right away don't throw them on the floor that's a good habit to get into bad habit is throwing everything on the floor for everybody stepping on it we have a left and right seat so that means that we need to make opposites so what we do is we take what we've already made flip it Line up our pleats, make sure everything's good. Take your china marker, mark this one off.
So this is what it takes to draw up, cut out, and uh, sew up a couple sets of seat inserts. Well friends, just in case you were wondering what the final outcome was on these 72 Olds cutlass seats, here we go. Oh, missed it. Uh-huh. Well my friends, if you learned anything today, uh, do me a favor and hit that like button and the subscribes that way every time a new video comes out and the notifications uh, you'll see what's going on around here so that's it for today we'll see ya